And we are back now with Karen Abel, who is the director of the English as a Second Language. Welcome to the show, Karen. Thank you. So, so could you tell me who these courses are designed for? The classes are designed for anyone who needs to learn English who doesn't already speak it as their first language. We get students who just got here in the United States a few days before they come see us. Mm -hmm. We have students who've been here a long time and suddenly have a special reason that they want to take classes now. We start with the very, very beginners. So if there's a student who's never taken English classes, maybe never studied in their own country very much, that's okay, we have a class for that. Okay. And so we're a very, very welcoming program because we can really serve just about everybody. Okay. How big of a Latino population do you have for these classes? You know, any, any year it can be anywhere from 60 to 70% of our students over the whole program. And here on campus, it's often close between 70 and 80 percent of wow. the students taking classes. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Karen. Thank you. And now with us, we have Paula Wilder, who is the coordinator of English as a Foreign Language. Welcome to show, Paula. Thank you. So tell us, what is EFL? EFL um, is English as a Foreign Language, as you said, and the difference between English as a Foreign Language is that it is academic. Okay. And so that means that the students already have the social skills that they need for English, and they have to be at a certain level in order to take the classes. And that differs from ESL in that ESL is more as a survival language. Okay. Someone could come into an ESL class and have no skills in English, but English as a foreign language is in our curriculum. Okay. What do these courses prepare the students for? When a student enrolls in the EFL classes, it's because that student has placed below college curriculum level, such as a course for English 111, which is required for most programs. Okay. So these classes prepare the students for what they would face in any class um, that they would take in the college curriculum, such as English 111, a psychology class, sociology, any health programs require the English 111 um, reading and writing curriculum. Mm -hmm. And so therefore these classes would give the students the foundation that they need on the academic level in order to read college level uh, material and to write college level assignments. And now with us, we have Heidi White, who is the Director of International Student Services and Study Abroad. You deal here with DACA students, right? Mm -hmm. And there's uh, different statuses here for your international students, so specifically with the DACA, how does that work? Sure. DACA students, it stands for the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals Program. So we have a lot of students, and that number of students is really increasing here at Durham Tech. Um, so those students are the students that have been approved by the government to have a temporary work permit. So a lot of those students are coming here because they're very interested in pursuing their education. So I like to meet with those students, sit down, try to figure out what are their goals for their education, um, and really talk to them about what options we have at the community college for them. Um, and then talk to them about what are the steps to enroll, what are the, some of the benefits they can get if they've been approved for DACA. Um, and also we talk about strategies for funding their education um, and try to figure out what's the most cost effective way, you know, based on all of the um, responsibilities that they might have, their work schedule, of how they can enroll and, and really get to their goal. Thank you so much, Heidi, for the great information you just gave us and the welcome to anybody who's interested to come by and see you here. Yeah, we hope to see you at Durham Tech. <laughs>